Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Jason, and here I talk about all things story. And the story I'm talking about today is the anthology by John Langan, The Wide Carnivorous Sky and Other Monstrous Geographies. The one I just finished a read-along with, so if you haven't read this yet and would like to read along and see me deconstruct, or talk about anyway, this, this uh, series of stories in more detail, check out the link above. And this was my first experience with John Langan. I've, I've owned his book, The Fisherman, from quite, for quite some time, but haven't quite got into it yet. However, after reading this, I am definitely going to put that further up on my list to be read. And this is a story of inspiration, of influence. There's many, many influences within each of these stories. And that is why I'm wearing my Bernie Wrightson shirt, because he is one of the uh, influences you'll see here. Everything from Poe to Lovecraft to Stephen King to John Carpenter, among many others. So let us delve into this story. What is the hook? What is this about? Well, it is an anthology of numerous stories, not too many. These stories are a little longer than you might expect from a normal short story. However, they're completely worth it. So I will go down the list briefly and give you kind of a synopsis of each one, just so you know what you're getting yourself into. Kids, the first story is about a ravenous group of zombie kids. How the Day Runs Down continues that tradition where we are experiencing a small town fighting off the zombie plague told in the fashion of a play. And then Technicolor, deconstructs Poe's famous work, The Mask of the Red Death, and The Wide Carnivorous Sky tells a story of vampiric cosmic horror plaguing a group of soldiers in Iraq. City of the Dog explores a love triangle in a city where ghouls lurk underneath the city streets. The Shallows, the Lovecraftian tale of a man who has lost everything but the end of the world. The Revel, a werewolf story told in a very movie-style format. June 1987, Hitchhiking, Mr. Norris, a very strange story about a man who is literally riding upon the world. And finally, Mother of Stone, the very last story, the longest story, a novelette, a novella, if you will. Well, there is a woman who is investigating a strange headless statue that bleeds. All right, well, let us move on to character, my favorite topic. Well, because we're dealing with short stories, we don't have quite as much time to develop characters, but I do feel that John Langett excels in this regard, despite the truncated word count. There are some characters that feel more alive than others. There's a woman, and I can't remember her name, which is kind of ironic, but in How the Day Runs Down, her story was very compelling to me, and it, it really stuck with me, more so than the other characters in that story, and there were quite a few. And The Shallows, probably my favorite story in this entire collection. A tale of a lonely man dealing with a, a Lovecraftian sort of problem where the entire world is falling apart before his eyes, but he is left alone. Well, not quite alone, but I won't spoil it for you. But even though some of these characters felt a little bit more distinct, a little bit more fleshed out than others, I still felt like the character work overall was great. Nobody really sounded the same. Everybody had their own unique problems, their own unique voice. And speaking of voice, we will get to that when we talk about the writing itself. But let's just say it was varied and unexpected. All right, now let's talk about plot. Well, I'm not going to go through every single one here, but I'll, I'll talk about how I feel about them globally. So some of them were better than others, for sure. And, and this is kind of a mixed bag of tales, as you find in most anthologies. Some really rise above the others. But none of these stories are bad by any stretch. I think that because John Langan focuses on character so much, that we tend to be invested more than we would in, in a normal horror story where it's all about the thrill, right? It's all about the surface emotion. There's there's nothing deeper than that. And so that's why this collection really rises above a lot of other short horror short stories I've read is that he's trying to tell stories we're all familiar with, the traumas, the problems, the struggles, everything we go through. But then he's wrapping it together with vampiric creatures and, and Cthulian creatures and, and zombies even. And, and so it always feels like these people are real. It always feels like we can connect with them. It doesn't feel like we're just in it for the scare or the blood and guts. And I think that's really why I think this collection is so great is that John Langan is trying to tell a deeply human story or deep, deeply human stories rather than just being horror junk food, essentially. And there were more than a few times that uh, John Langan said something or the character said something on the page that really gave me pause. I, I stopped in my tracks and, and literally considered things about life, about many other experiences you'll, you'll come up against, and you'll see what I'm talking about if you do dive into this collection. And that, again, is what makes this anthology so special. All right, now let's talk about the writing itself, or as I like to call it, the cinematography of the novel. Well, we have stories told in standard third-person POV. We have a story told in second-person present tense without dialogue quotes like Cormac McCarthy. We have a story told in the format of a play. We have a story told in first person. We have a story 
told almost like a movie treatment. So I think you can see where I'm going with this. And unfortunately for me, sometimes it's got in the way of enjoying the stories. But if there's one thing I can say about this is that um, regardless of the format or the style that John chose to write in, I always was engaged. He is a master with the written word. So even though there were a few that fell short, there was a few times I was spacing out a bit. I was for the most part, very engaged with this. I do feel that some of these maybe could have benefited from more of a traditional approach. And even though the final one, the very final one, which was sort of the most upsetting one to me, there is a reason giving for the way it was told at the very end. So that kind of made it all worthwhile, or it was a little bit of a redemption. I guess. But just know that you're going to be in for a wild ride, maybe a jarring ride, but just keep an open mind because for the most part, I feel like the decisions he made were the right ones. So that is why I'm going to give John Langan's The Wide Carnivorous Sky and other monstrous geographies an 8 out of 10. Fantastic writing, inventive writing despite the divisive nature of it, great character work, and a varied collection from a vast array of influences. Some that will get under your skin, some that will break your heart, some that will make you laugh. And I have to add too that at the very end, he has a breakdown. He has a breakdown of story notes where he goes through every single story talks about what inspired it, talks about the background. And then I don't want to spoil it for you, but there's another story, kind of a story at the very end of this entire collection that I was grinning the entire time reading it. And it really uh, was an amazing conclusion to this collection. And I can't say that I read every single page in every book I pick up, including the back matter. But in this one, I will promise you it is completely worth it. So if you'd like to check out my own work, check out my books in the description below, or you can check out my series Worth 1000 Words, where I write a 1000 word short story inspired by a piece of artwork on the spot every week. Come hang out with me on my Discord, where we talk about story and all of its forms. And thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.